welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop, Knights of the Hound Table. Knights of the Hound Table is a two to four player game, takes about a half an hour or so to play, and it's for ages eight and up. It's made by the company We Ride Games, and it is a game in which you're basically going to be uh, drafting hounds and attacking your opponent's hounds. You'll be gathering heroes and gathering certain bone cards to use to buy heroes, and depending on the number of players, you'll be utilizing either life points or removing your opponent's hounds from the game. If you are the last hound group standing, you're the winner of the game, Knights of the Hound table. Let's go ahead and take it down below. I'll show you what's in the game. I'll show you how to play a two-player variant and then we'll talk about the other ones as well as give you our review for the game right now. So here are all the components for the game Knights of the Hound table and I'm going to explain a two-player game after telling you what comes in the box. So let's go ahead and talk about that first. You'll see that there is a life point card, one for each player in a two-player game. In a three and a four-player game it plays a little differently but it's very very similar. You'll set these aside because you actually won't use these to begin the game but you will use them at a certain point. This is the box and the rules for the game which you won't need because I'm going to explain the game for you right now. There is six different hero cards at least there is for the prototype I have here and then there's 24 of these hound cards. You'll shuffle up the hound card deck and then you're going to deal out six to each player in a two-player game. After you deal out six cards, then you're going to enter a draft in which players are going to look at the cards that are in their hand, select one, pass the remaining cards over to the next player, and it will keep going back and forth up until the point in which somebody, each player has six cards. Then you're going to do the same thing by dealing out six more cards and giving them to the players, and then they will go ahead and make a deck of six cards utilizing the draft. Shuffle these decks up and set them next to you. This will be your deck for the entire game. Over here are going to be bone tokens. They're incrementally uh, distributed by, with ones and with fives, depending on how you flip them. And so you'll be utilizing these to basically score points as well as allowing you to gather heroes. To start the game, flip over three hero cards. And these are able to be purchased via the top left-hand corner. These are going to symbolize the cost of the card. The far top right will symbolize their power. And then there's color. It's either going to be blue or red. And finally, down below is the ability that these cards will perform, depending on if they're in the middle section of the game board. Uh, these are the extra heroes. When one of these heroes gets bought, you'll take one of these cards here and refill that space in which a hero was taken from. So if this guy gets bought, you'll replace it with this guy here. Pretty simple as to how that works. To begin the game, because there's no health points, you're just trying to acquire these bones here. And so each player is going to draw three cards. You're going to take these three cards and then you're going to organize them in any way you want from left, middle, and right. After you've gone ahead and done that, then there's going to be a flip. So let's say that this is exactly how each of them organized. The left is going to be attack, the right will be defense, and the middle is going to be the ability. And you're just going to go, okay, flip all at once. After all of them have been flipped, you're then going to determine uh, what ability triggers first. And that's going to be based on the middle card, and whoever has the highest will go first. So Benedict here has got a 2, and Rocky here has a 1, so the 2 is going to go first. And this one says, you cannot take damage this turn. You lose a treat, and your opponents gain one. So he is going to get a treat, and he will not be able to take, this, this character won't be able to take damage. Then Rocky's going to go in, it says, add your defense to your attack, and lower your defense by 1. So this is the defense, and this is the attack. So this is going to go to 0, and this is going to go to 7. Uh, and after that takes place, then you're going to do your attacks and uh, your defense. So this attack will go towards the... Uh, sorry, this attack will go to the defense. This is actually the defense. So in which case, that's a 3 to a 6. Um, so that actually means that this one says add your defense to your attack. So this would go over to here, putting, making it a, a 7, and this is going to go down to 1. But it doesn't matter, because 3 minus 5 is still negative 2, so it won't do any damage. This character here now has 7 attack, hitting this 4. So 7 minus 4 is going to be 3. In which case, you're going to actually have this player take 3 treats. But remember, this player can't be hit. So in, th in that case, you actually get no treats. So this player takes no damage, and this player can't deal damage to this guy, because his defense 
defense is too strong. If you were to deal damage over though, that is going to give you one treat for each damage you deal. The rest of the cards afterwards are going to get discarded into a discard pile next to the player's deck, and three more, more uh, hound cards will be drawn, in which case they'll be able to select where they want to place their cards. Attack, defense, or attack, ability, and defense. So we'll place this here, this here, this here, and then this player is going to go ahead and draw these three cards here. And we'll go this one here, uh, this one, and this one. And then we're going to go ahead and flip them all at once again. And rinse and repeat. Cookie is a two, bigger than a one, so Cookie's going to go. Draw a hound, and add that hound's power to your defense, and then uh, send it back to the discard pile. Okay, so this is going to go to the defense, making it a six instead of a five. And this guy says, uh, steal half of your opponent's treats rounding down. So in that case, this guy only has one treat, so he's not going to get any. But if he had five, he'd get two treats. So that's a good way to get some things. But in this case, probably not a good play. Uh, then we're going to have our attacks go to the defense. Five minus six, negative one. It doesn't go through. Six minus three. This actually does go through, doing three damage, giving this player three treats. And that will continue along this path. People are going to keep doing this up until one of two triggers occurs. The first trigger is players buy two of these heroes. And what happens is after the end of each round, the player with the least amount of treats can buy one of these, followed by the next player, allowing you to buy these guys and place them into your discard pile if you have enough. When two of these guys get bought, then the life points cards are going to get triggered, in which case you're going to start with 20 health the moment two of those guys are bought. The other way is if a total cumulative number of treats is 20 or more at the end of a round, then you're also going to get your life points. So you'll take your 20, you'll place it next to your deck, and this will basically uh, count as your life in the game. And the way you're going to be losing the game is if your life goes from 20 to 0. And it will continue along that similar path. Except for one interesting thing. Now, whenever damage goes through, so I'll just go ahead and show three more cards out. And we'll just say that the abilities happened. And we're just going to talk about how you're going to lose life points. So in this case, this three goes to the four, which does nothing. This four goes to the four, which does nothing. So let's go ahead and switch it a little bit. We'll do it like this. So these abilities trigger. They didn't do anything. This four goes to this three, which does one damage. So he's going to get his one treat like normal. And in addition, he'll do one damage to this player's life points, putting it at 19. And these two would tie doing no damage. So that is how life points will go down as you play. These cards here, when you buy them, they're going to go into your discard pile to start. And when your deck runs out, so after these last three cards are played, you're going to shuffle your discard pile along with your deck. And if you have these guys in, they'll go in as well. These hero cards count just like a normal hound, but they're much stronger in a lot of ways. They have a really cool ability, and most of them have at least five to even nine power, making them very good for defense and attack. And you have these options to pitch, pick these heroes up as you have the uh, currency to purchase them. So you can choose to hold on to your currency and wait for a big one, or simply buy multiples of them. And the game will continue up until the point where somebody's HP reaches zero. And that is the idea for Knights of the Hound table. So let's come up and I'll talk about some more of the cards, talk about some of the heroes, and also inform you on how heroes can actually retire hounds when they defeat them. So a couple caveats before we get into my review really quickly. I want to talk about some of the heroes and some of the cards as well, or hounds. This is Zidago, and it says add the power of your three hounds together. If it's an even number, you'll be able to draw five cards next round as opposed to three, giving you more options. It also has a four uh, power, which can be good for defense or attack. It's not the strongest hero as far as power goes, but that ability gives you a lot of options. A Duke of Marma. If you deal damage, you gain eight treats. It's a five power. Power, but maybe there are some sixes in the hound deck you'd rather use. Thusly, if you do do damage, that's going to give you eight treats to let you buy even more heroes. Goliath, the biggest and scariest hero, is going to cost 14. However, um, it's got a nine attack, making it very valuable, or power, I should say. If you cause a hound to faint, cause an additional hound to faint in an opponent's discard pile. And how do the how does the fainting work? Well, let's go ahead and talk about that. If this is a nine and this is a four, and it attacks this hound here and defeats it, which it will, it is going to be removed from the game. Hounds can get removed by heroes. Heroes that do damage to a hounds will remove those hounds from the game. This guy will let you discard an additional hound from that player's graveyard when it defeats or when the cumulative group of dogs defeats a. Uh, 
a, a hound. Now, not only that, but this guy has to be in the middle area, making its nine not so powerful, but the ability is still rather useful. And one more, Brave Bark. Say a number before flipping cards. If that number matches one of your opponent's cards, gain a hero from the barracks, meaning you can just get a free hero from the barracks for that. It's also an eight and cost 13. Pretty useful there. Let's talk about some of the hounds now. These are the cards you'll be drafting at the very beginning of the game, giving you your 12 card deck. Bullseye is only two, but if you deal three or more damage to an opponent, add a hero from the barracks to your discard pile. Bandit is a five. Gain a treat for every even powered card on the field, which means you can get up to six treats, and that's very useful. It's a powerful card, and it can give you some currency at the beginning of the game. Or Frank, attack a hound of your choice from the opponent's discard instead of the defending hound. Ooh, your defending hound is a six. I'd rather fight against Bob over here, who's only a one with my six, doing five damage to you. And then let's talk about one more. Maximilian, buy, hero, uh, buy a hero for three treats less than their cost. That can be very useful after the battle has taken place, but it might cost you something because you had to utilize this as your action. Uh, so what I wanted, to, the last thing I want to talk about is when placing cards down, there are two colors, and we discussed that a little bit during the time in which I was explaining the components. There is the blue cards and the red. If you place down three blue or red cards, that is a power bonus, in which case you can give plus one to your defense or to your attack. And in this case, there's a one, three, and a three, and they're all blue. So you get the power bonus, and you can give that three, one, turning it into a four, or the one, a plus one, turning it into a two. These can be very useful, specifically if you need that extra point from a six to a seven, which can make all the difference in the game. And that's pretty much what I have to say about the caveats for the game. Don't forget, though, also that these guys are double-sided, and there's a one on one side and a five on the other. I don't know. This is a prototype. I don't know what uh, they're going to do with the tokens, but as far as that goes, don't want to mix up by flipping them over. Knights of the Hound Table is a fun game. I really, really enjoyed this game. I love drafting games. I like these tactical decision-making games that are quick, simple, and have unique twists to them. All the cards prevent some kind of pre present some kind of unique trick as to how and where you choose to play them and when. Knowing what your opponent has in their deck is important as well. And there's only 12 cards in an opponent's deck. So after you go through one full set of 12 cards, which is four rounds roughly, you're going to know what they have and how they can choose to place cards down. And if you're really good, you'll know all the cards in the game because there's not a huge amount but in the rules it states that you only have to take 24 cards uh, from the set of cards and then shuffle them and do a 12 and 12 so there probably is going to be more cards in this game than even I have this is a prototype so it's likely there will be more cards just based on what I read in the rules Additionally, when playing with multiple players, you'll be trying to eliminate hounds as opposed to using life points, which is very, very similar to the style of play. And I think if you get the two player, you'll understand how the three and four player work as well. This game also has some really, really cute artwork. I love the stylization of the artwork. I like how the card is formatted. It's very easy to understand. It's got flavor text on all the cards. Money is Pa'er, and Pa'er is Ammunition by Maximilian. Or let's look at Brave Bark. They may take our treats, but they'll never take our freedom! So it has a lot of cute and funny little quotes on the cards. And being simple and fun is definitely useful, especially in a gateway style game like this one that presents some nice clarity for drafting as well as tactical placement. When you are playing with people who haven't really done a lot of board game stuff, this is a nice filler card game that fits about 20 to 30 minutes and can play up to those four players. And it is very enjoyable. I really like this game actually. And in fact, I like it so much that I'm actually going to keep it in my small group of games in my shelf. Um, hopefully it does really well and I get a nice fancy box to use, and hopefully it includes more cards. But for what there is there, I really, really enjoy it. What I'd like to see for the game is additional cards and additional heroes. I want to see more of that, because while there's a lot here, uh, I'd still like to have different sets of cards to be able to choose from making in the 24 set draft, as well as multiple heroes to come out so you're always able to pull more, especially when you run out of the heroes and you're still fighting players, and some of your cards involve investing in heroes, and you can't do them because because they are now all empty, which I imagine, like I said before, that there will be additional cards in the set. I just don't have them. Overall, the game is a lot of fun. And if you like the sound of this game, I definitely suggest taking a look down below on Kickstarter. Cute, fun, doggies, a lot more games with dogs coming out. I, I like that because I know there's a lot of cat games. This is this is one of the good ones. Check out uh, Knights of the Hound Table and decide if it's something for you down below in the description. Uh, I'm not even going to bark, but it, 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 it's, it's cool. You probably like it.